Hey, what's up? Today I have one of the most powerful laptops on my review. Legion Pro 7i. Well, and of course as an owner of Legion 7 2021 I was interested to see where my favorite series of laptops is going. Plus, together with the laptop they sent some top branded accessories, which I will also tell you about. Here we go. I'll start, as always, with the appearance. And in this aspect, everything is simple. There is no reason to change the already almost perfect design. The novelty retains the general layout, simple forms, flat edge, appeared in 2022. Yes, the dimensions and weight have increased, but the difference is almost imperceptible compared to its predecessors. The top legions and before that were not the most comfortable to carry laptops, believe the owner. Those who need models weighing a couple of kilos look towards slim versions. The obvious differences for me are two. These are more aggressive design of windows for air outlet on the sides and back. And of course, RGB backlighting. To be more exact, it's almost complete absence. If the predecessor sparkled and shimmered with all the colors of the rainbow like a Christmas tree, then here only one neat RGB stripe on the front edge is responsible for creating a true gamer atmosphere. As for me, the change can't be written either in pluses or minuses. Although someone may experience an aesthetic shock. If this video is watched by owners of gaming laptops, share in the comments whether you have the multicolored backlight on permanently. Next, two innovations are not so obvious. The materials of the case have changed slightly. If the top and bottom covers are still made of anodized aluminum, the surface around the keyboard is plastic now, and this pleased me. I have a Legion 7 with a fully metal case, and if you play for 3 to 5 hours, then in the area of the upper rows of keys is not really one to touch. It doesn't burn, but it's unpleasant. This surface of the novelty does not get so warm. At the same time, the overall strength of the case has not suffered much. The second point is the new coloring. If my old laptop has a dark gray metallic, the surface of the novelty is almost black. This color collects fingerprints perfectly, and it's harder to wipe off later. Although I understand the logic. Black always looks more premium. From simple observations, the hinges of the top cover have changed and have become a bit tighter, which is good, and still allow you to open the notebook 180 degrees. We've seen enough beauty. Now let's take a look at the ports. The legions have always had plenty of this stuff. And just the way I like it, most of the exits are in the back. There's still some on the sides, though. On the left we have a full-size USB-A version 3.2 and Thunderbolt 4. On the right we have a combined audio output, a physical webcam switch, and another full-size USB-A version 3.2. Finally at the back is Gigabit Ethernet, USB-C 3.2, HDMI version 2.1, two more USB-As, one of which can deliver power even when the laptop is turned off, and a power connector. Traditionally, there was no place for a card reader. Lenovo still puts them only in the slim version. The keyboard is still as chic as ever. Quiet, with a short stroke. Full size, with a full fledged number pad and large cursor keys. All convenient keyboard shortcuts are in place. And RGB backlighting is still here. You can customize each key in the front RGB stripe using Lenovo Spectrum, which replaced the problematic utility from Corsair. One very interesting point is also worth mentioning. Notice how the WASD buttons in my sample are white? That's ceramic. By default, the buttons are set to regular keycaps. The Legion Pro 7 comes with this case with an additional set of four ceramic keycaps and a replacement tool. Perhaps some mega gamers will appreciate it. The touchpad is visually unchanged as well. It's just a regular, medium-sized one. Yes, it is no longer glass, but mylar. But if I hadn't read it in the specifications, I wouldn't have even guessed it. You can't feel the difference to the touch. Continuing the theme of minimal changes, let's move on to the screen. It's still the same 16-inch IPS panel with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels. The screen is great for both work and gaming. The excellent brightness of 500 nits, 100% sRGB, and NVIDIA G-Sync support remain. And of course, ready-made color profiles, which are pulled from the company's servers by x right Utility. The maximum refresh rate is 240 Hz. That is most likely a plus for fans of fast action games. In the Windows settings you can still choose 60, 120, 
and auto 120 to 240. My only wish for the future is probably a brighter screen from 1000 nits with support for full HDR and full coverage of the color Space V3, as done in Legion 9. The webcam above the screen now shoots video in full HD. Picture quality has clearly improved. Though still not up to a good smartphone. There are also a couple of microphones nearby. Branded software should clear the voice from noise, but it does not work very well. It's better to use NVIDIA Broadcast for this purpose. It's worth mentioning that the Legion Pro 7 supports Tobi Eye's eye tracking software. It can dim the screen when you step away from the laptop and, for example, extend the control in some games. In terms of the sound produced by the notebook itself, there is no news. There are still two 2 watt speakers directed to the floor. The quality is just average. The sound can be adjusted in a special application. Okay, we can stop digging into microscopic changes and move on to the main course. Of course, it is the most actual laptop hardware. This is a powerful top-end processor Intel Core i9-13900HX. 8 fast and 16 efficient cores, totaling 32 threads. Only 13980HX is faster than it. 32GB of DDR5-5600 RAM. Fast 1TB SSD from Samsung. Killer wireless module with Wi-Fi 6E support. And in the finale the fastest laptop graphics card NVIDIA RTX 4090 with 16GB of video memory and TGP of 175 watts. Of course, there are upgrade options. You can change the RAM and the two available slots. There is one more free slot for a second M2 format SSD in addition to the system SSD. And you can also try to replace the Wi-Fi module. In real life this notebook easily pulls almost any working tasks. And I'm not talking about Excel and Photoshop, but something much more resource intensive like 3D or video editing in 4K. By the way, I advise you to work with video in hybrid mode when both integrated and discrete graphics cards are available. For the stats lovers out there, I ran a set of synthetic tests as usual. Here are the results, Geekbench 6, Cinebench in single and multi-threaded test, Corona Benchmark, old and new version. Finally, PC Mark 10. I ran the video card in several 3D Mark tests. Here are the results in Time Spy, Port Royal, Speedway, Finally, games. As always, three games from different years with different levels of graphics. I tested in native resolution, only with active discrete graphics and in performance mode. For the validity of the test, I chose ready-made presets in the game without changing anything in them. So, you can open some of my previous reviews and compare the results. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. DLSS balance, graphics press set highest. The average frame rate is 213 frames per second. This, by the way, is also the answer to the potential question why would a laptop need a 240Hz screen? Next Horizon Zero Dawn. DLSS Balance, Press Set Graphics Ultimate Quality. Averaged 151 frames per second. Finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Ray Tracing Ultra, DLSS Auto. Average frequency of 75 frames per second. Separately in this game I also tested the ray tracing overdrive preset as an example of next-gen graphics. My Legion 7 with RTX 3070 in this mode simply ceases to be playable. And on the new Pro 7 it even gets pulled at an average of 47 frames per second. In cases like this, assuming the game supports it, of course, it's time to turn on frame generation or what NVIDIA called DLSS3. In Ray Tracing Ultra we get already 120 frames per second. And even in Ray Tracing Overdrive the game finally becomes playable. The result is an average of 78 frames per second. Due to the new technology, we get 60% gain in Ultra and 65% in Overdrive. A short intermediate summary. Legion Pro 7 in this maximum configuration will quietly axe all current games in native resolution and at maximum settings. And there is even a reserve for the future. Only full-size PCs with desktop components are more powerful. The power is increasing every year. Even if you don't read the official specs, I was able to accelerate the CPU to 133 to 137 watts, 
and the TGP of the video card in some games jumped to 180 watts. And all this while the heat indoors was over 30 degrees. Anyway, what I'm getting at. Yes, the video card averaged 73 to 78 degrees, at its peak it was up to 80 degrees. The CPU in games warmed up to 96 degrees, and in the stress test up to 100 degrees. That with all this heat in the room and load is quite adequate temperatures. Yes, and the noise level at maximum fan speeds is quite normal. Some competitors with 3060 are louder. Thanks to the massive vapor chamber and liquid metal. That's where the weight gain of the current generation of legions comes from. Well, and perhaps the mystical Lenovo proprietary chip responsible for load balancing in the system has made its contribution to the work. Although I have no idea how to check its influence. We'll have to believe the manufacturer. A few words about battery life. The battery in the notebook has a maximum authorized capacity of 99.9 watt hours. Yes, that's a lot. But taking into account such a productive iron to expect a long time of work away from the charger is not worth it. The role of Legion Pro 7 is more of a replacement for a full-size desktop PC. If you try to reduce the screen frequency to 60 Hz, brightness by half, enable all power saving and silent modes. In general, PC Mark 10 test with typical office load was able to extract 4 hours and 40 minutes of battery life from the notebook. Watching videos, if you use the right player, will take about 6 hours. Quite tolerable for such a laptop. A pleasant surprise was the included power supply. Lenovo is gradually improving this brick. Compare it with the power supply for my Legion. The new one became both more powerful from 300 to 330 watts, and at the same time more compact and lighter. It's a small thing, but it's nice. Plus, USB-C charging is traditionally supported. But for normal charging of 140 watts, you need a branded charger unit. It will be enough for basic office work and watching videos, but not for full-fledged games. Finally let's talk about Legion's proprietary Vantage laptop customization app. The most interesting change is in the list of thermal modes. In addition to the familiar quiet, balanced and performance modes, a new personal mode has been added. In it you can slightly adjust the speed of cooling fans or turn them on full. You can also play with power and temperature limits of the processor and video card. Although I would advise you to go there only if you know what you are doing. In this mode with default sliders, my laptop behaved quite strangely in some games. For example, periodically lowered the power of the video card to 50 to 60 watts. And judging by BIOS updates Lenovo is still polishing smart balancing. That's why I conducted all the tests in classic performance mode. Let's return to the settings in the application. Here you can slightly overclock the graphics, select the mode of operation of integrated and discrete video card up to exclusively discrete mode. Further from the really important options of charging the built-in battery, fast, night and so to speak extending the life. Before we summarize, let's take another look at the signature 600 series gaming accessories. For those who wish to collect the whole Legion set. First of all, it is of course the company's flagship mouse Legion M600 with PixArt 3335 sensor. It is capable of working both wired and unwired. The shape is symmetrical and the size fits a medium to large palm. The weight is within the norm for large wireless mice, just over 100 grams clicks are clear, though slightly loud. Resource up to 15 million clicks. The wheel is informative, with a clear cutoff. Two additional buttons were placed on top and on each of the sides. At the bottom, in addition to the gliders and the sensor, there are two switches. One is responsible for connection, wire, Bluetooth, wireless. The second one is for the polling frequency, 500 and 1000 Hz. And under the round cover on magnets there is a place for USB dongle. A few important points. First of all, a lot of things are customizable. RGB backlight, DPI options, polling frequency. For what there is a separate application. There you can also update the firmware. Secondly, not bad working time up to 200 hours. But this is most likely with the backlight turned off and with the minimum polling rate. There is fast charging, for 10 minutes 10 hours of work. Third, the wired connection. The plus that the cable compared to the M500 has become softer. 
Minus, if you suddenly lose the branded USB-A USB-C cable, not every third-party one will fit for a replacement because of the narrow niche in the case of the mouse. And so it turned out to be a really great universal device for playing and working. Next up is the Legion H600 gaming headset. In brief, it's a full-size headphone that can work with or without a wire, for which there's a separate USB dongle in the kit. It also comes with great powerful sound and a pretty good microphone. They wouldn't work for me for one reason only. There's not enough room for my ears. They put too much pressure on them. The Legion S600 Special Stand is a great companion to the headphones. The contacts on top allow you to charge the previously mentioned headphones, and the base of the stand serves as a wireless charger, for example, for your smartphone. Plus, it can act as a hub due to a couple of USB ports. You can plug mouse and headphone dongles into them. Well, now that you've watched till now, we can discuss the price and conclude. Legion Pro 7 in this, maximum configuration can cost about $2,700 to $3,000. On the one hand, the price is impressive. On the other hand, among competitors with the same hardware, it is a usual middle ground. In any case, we get the most powerful mobile hardware on the market, capable of pulling any work task and any actual game. At least with this screen resolution. And I, as the owner of Legion 7 on RTX 3070, feeling how my laptop is not enough for maximum settings, envy the owners of the new Pro 7. To the pluses I will also add a pleasant design, a good screen, a wide choice of ports, a comfortable keyboard. Against the background of progress in terms of performance, replacing part of the metal with plastic, loss of RGB backlighting and other things feel like trifles. The only pity is the missing fingerprint scanner. That's been it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.